I'm not sure whether it was 2003 or 2004, but I had the privilege of visiting uh, the country of Wales. And while I was in Cardiff, I was highly honored to meet a great servant of God. Her name was Annie Spencer. Her parents had been commended to the work of God in Trinidad, I think back in 1922. And when I was in Wales, they were getting ready to celebrate the centenary of the Welsh Revival, which occurred in 1904-1905. And it seemed everyone was looking back and thinking about the good old days and the revival in Wales. I don't like walking backwards. I think it's good to take a glance back, but we need to keep moving forward. A lot of the Christians seem to be quite distressed because uh, the area there was quite depressed economically, and uh, also that untold thousands of Muslims had moved into the area from the Middle East, and they were quite concerned that the culture was being damaged and so on. But this dear lady wasn't thinking that way at all. Um, her attitude was, wait a minute, we didn't go to the Middle East, so God brought the people to us. And uh, what we couldn't do in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, we can do in Cardiff. We can talk to the people about the Lord. Now, she was uh, very crippled at this point. She'd served the Lord over 50 years in the Caribbean, and, and she had two canes, and she just sort of crawled her way, dragged her way to the gathering of the saints. And I remember speaking to some of the young people and they said, you know, you have to have a pretty good excuse not to show up at the meetings because you know that dear sister Annie is going to be there. And so a little sniffle doesn't quite do it if you have to drag yourself with two canes to the gathering of the saints. Well, she was a very cheery soul and um, she would, in her little apartment, she would go through the phone books, and she would find any names that appeared to be Muslim names. And then she would write a personal letter to the lady of the house. And she would say, I spent my life working with children in Trinidad, and now I'm back in Wales here, but I still have a heart for the children. And I wonder if you would be willing, I spend hours praying for children and I would like to pray for your children. If you will send me their names and any requests you have, I will pray for them. Well, it was very difficult for these Muslim mothers to turn down an offer from a lifelong missionary to pray for their children. And so she would get responses back. And uh, after a bit, she might suggest to them, say, listen, on a certain day, I will be sitting in such and such a park at such and such a park bench. I would love to meet you. And so she would sit there, this little old lady, crippled up, sitting in the park bench as these mothers would slowly come close and then sit at the other end of the bench and then briefly make comment. And slowly they would open their hearts to her and she would pour the gospel into them. She had the joy of seeing quite a number of these mothers saved. I often think of her and of that little verse the Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 22. To the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Who would think of this quote, retired missionary, a crippled up, hardly able to walk, a sitting there in a park bench, and God using her as the means of getting the gospel into the hearts of these women and through the, the mothers into the hearts of their children. So when we think about ourselves and how God can use us, let's not forget this, that he loves to use our liabilities. The reason children can do things in evangelism that we can't do is because they're children. And the reason old people get to do certain things and say certain things is because, well, they're old. <laughs> Give them the benefit of the doubt. And so it is. 
But whatever your weakness happens to be, that may very well be the way that God will use you for his glory. So when we put everything on the altar, it's not just the assets. Say, Lord, you know, I think I'm pretty good at this, or I've, I've got a good sense of humor, I've got a good mind, I've got this and that. Maybe you can use that. And the Apostle Paul said, when, when God did inventory of my life, he didn't use my strengths. He used my weaknesses. And so I came to glory in my weaknesses, to have confidence in the weakness, because when I was weak, I discovered his strength. So, Christian, you may feel very disqualified, very weak. Don't let it stop you. That's the very thing that God may use in accomplishing his purpose through you. Be open to opportunities, perhaps opportunities that you look now upon as liabilities. Those people moving into our neighborhood, they're changing the neighborhood. See them as a mission field. And may the Lord help us to set our mind on things above and to see things the way he sees them and to see them not as an imposition or an adjustment to our culture, but as a mission field on our doorstep for his glory.